Wife of the president, Aisha Buhari, says the population of out-of-school children in the north is disheartening. Mrs. Buhari, who said this during the inauguration of a pet project, Future Assured Youth Education and Empowerment Program, aimed at training 750 young persons in Adamawa State, said the situation required the government's urgent attention. She said the case is most disheartening in the northern states, where insurgency, poverty and social cultural norms have played key roles in further worsening what is left of the ruins of dilapidated structures, insufficient and poorly motivated teachers at all levels. According to her, education deprivation in northern Nigeria is driven by factors such as economic barriers and social cultural norms and practices that discourage attendance in formal education, especially for girls. Plus TV Africa spoke to Mba Zuku, managing partner Grand Central on this issue. Statistically, you cannot ignore um, you can't ignore the you can't ignore the numbers, what the numbers are saying. And I think the data that's been put forward in all the studies are ac accurate. Accurate enough for us at least to take into consideration when we're making when we're making our plans. The question is where do you go from here? And is it a question of more resources, more money being pumped into those systems, or are there other more fundamental things to consider? Um, I believe, and I think a number of, of people are, are coming to that same perspective, that there are other more fundamental things that have to be done um, to face the challenge of education. And if we fix education generally, it can also be fixed in the North. It's, just, it's not a Northern problem per se. Um, it is an education problem that is a national problem that the country needs to address. And when we address that problem, then the North would, would benefit from that if they do certain things, and we can come to that. I believe that's what the First Lady was referring to, that there are historically certain constraints. But let's dial back even further and look at the ancient kingdoms. As far, as you, as far back as you can go, you will find that, that uh, when we say social cultural, I guess we're referring to the, to the, religious, the, um, the religious and the cultural context around, around most of the North. And yet, when you go back into history, you find that the ancient kingdoms of Songhai, uh, Timbuktu, Jene, the first and the oldest universities in Africa, there were Islamic scholars. So it's not as though Islam as a, as a faith has a challenge with education. And it's not an education, not just in terms of the content or even in terms of who gets it. But it has been, it's, it's a fundamental, in fact, it is a scientific society. So um, um, that's not the problem, per se. I think that there's a larger um, problem that is delivered, but that is brought to bear by the political infrastructure, that, like, the political layer that surrounds the, um, the social cultural issues, and whether or not that political, air, that political layer is not actually what is preventing the benefits of education from, from filtering through. Um, it would also be important for us to understand that, that the system that we call this education system that we think is not delivering for the North, is it actually delivering for the rest of the country? And the answer is, is clearly no. You cannot have a situation where, as, an, as a nation, what we have is a system that has about 1% of the population in a tertiary education. In other words, the entirety of our education sector, tertiary education sector, has a population of about 1.7 million in terms of enrollment. 1.7, 1.75 million in a country of 183 million is 1%. Can you survive as a country with 1% of your population? Forget what's happening in the North for a minute, and let's look at it from a national perspective and ask ourselves, is the tertiary sector even producing the capacity? Does it have the capacity to produce the numbers that we need to drive development in our country? And the answer is a clear no. The global benchmark is 8%, and Nigeria is at, point, is at 1% or less than 1%, because you will have to discount that number by the quality of those that come into schools. And when you decompose the results that are coming from JAM over the past 20, 30 years, you start to see that, it, that the majority of the students who get into our universities get into universities with a score below 200, which is 50% of the 400 marks that are possible in JAM. And that the bulk of that number actually score between <coughs> 180 and 160. You'll also find that, that the people who score the lowest, in terms of the cutoff rates, the cutoff marks are the lowest for colleges of education, polytechnics and monotechnics. And yet, statistically, this is where the bulk of our population is going to fall. So it's not everyone that's going to go into university and get a degree. The bulk of our population has to be educated for skills. And they must work in a technical and vocational education sector. 
And so our education system, which is focused on, on the academic education, is leading to a bottleneck where the capacity, the actual carrying capacity of our institutions is 1% of our population. How do you break that? When we break that, then the benefits begin to flow um, for everyone. And it, it is not going to be solved by, by setting up more physical universities and physical secondary schools. If you look again, um, and I think it was under um, the minister, Obia Zekwesili, study was done. And they found that the dropout rate from junior secondary three, the transition from JS3 into S SS1 is 14%. So out of every 100 children that reach JS3, only 14 will continue to, to senior secondary one. So that means that we're losing 86% of our children. And this was a study done in 1993 or something of this sort. So you're asking yourself over the decades, what is happening to that 86%? If they're falling out and they do not go, because the track to SS1 is what takes you to the university. So if you have only 14% of your children into that, and that, the reason why it's 14% is not because they're not intelligent, it's because the carrying capacity, we have fewer senior secondary schools than we have um, secondary schools in general. So immediately you start to see the thing is constricting. And so that, 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 that constriction continues to happen and narrowing continues to happen until it gets to that top where there's only 1% of our population in tertiary education.